You know, it's not very often that New Year's Eve falls on a Sunday. So I think it's pretty neat that we get to start New Year's here at church. Truly, there's no better place to face the new year, to face the things that are lying ahead than in God's house. Now, I'm sure going to a real fun New Year's party with decorations and food would be a lot more fun. And certainly that might come later for some of you. But for me, I, I couldn't even tell you the last time I stayed up the entire night. Lately, I've had a lot of trouble uh, staying awake much longer after the kids have gone to bed. But year's end is a good time to be introspective. You know, we just take a moment, pause, and all examine how it is that we got here. How was your year? Some might smile and nod and say, it's pretty good. While others might say, ugh, I'm glad it's over. And I think both can look forward with hope, right? If you had a good year, you look ahead with hope and you say, I hope for more of the same. And if you had a bad year, you're looking forward with hope. You're hoping things will be different. And even though it feels like, you know, a a year has been torn away uh, off the calendar and it falls to the floor, in truth, tomorrow is just another day. If we had problems yesterday, they do not magically disappear once you turn the calendar from 2023 to 2024. The same old problems and issues that we had in the old year, they will follow us into the new year. So with the new year comes resolutions, (laughs) new hopes, new challenges, new paths, and new beginnings. No matter how we feel about entering a new year, A new year is ahead of us, whether we're ready or not. So I say, let's have the best year ever, right? We had the best Christmas ever. We should have the best New Year's ever. So today I want to look at a situation that was facing the people of Israel for our text today, and it's in Joshua chapter 3. So 40 years of wandering in the wilderness, the people of Israel are finally ready to cross the Jordan into the Promised Land. This is an entirely new generation of people. Their parents had all died in the wilderness except for Joshua and Caleb. They're the only two remnants of the original uh, people who fled Egypt during the Exodus. And Joshua is about to lead them across the Jordan, so he gives everybody some instructions. He tells them to keep their eyes on the Ark of the Covenant, which will be carried by the priests. Now, the Ark was golden box, Inside it had the Ten Commandments, it had a jar of manna, it had Aaron's staff that had budded. It was made of acacia wood and it was covered with uh, a layer of solid gold and the top of it was called the mercy seat. It had angels on either side of the mercy seat and it was believed that that was where the Spirit of God rested. Joshua 3 says, Then Joshua rose early in the morning and they set out. And they came to the Jordan. He and all the people of Israel and lodged there before they passed over. At the end of three days, the officers went through the camp and commanded the people, as soon as you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God being carried by the Levitical priests, then you shall set forth from your place and follow it. Yet there shall be distance between you and it, about 2,000 cubits in length. Do not come near it in order that you may know the way that you shall go. For you have not passed this way before. Then Joshua said to the people, Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. And Joshua said to the priests, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass on before the people. So they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went before the people. So the very first instruction to all the people is, When you see the Ark move, you follow it. (laughs) Why? Well, because Joshua says, you guys don't know the way. You've never been this way before, right? There's going to be challenges ahead. There's giants ahead. The land has been uncharted. So we follow the ark. Likewise, with the new year, we are crossing into challenges and uncertainties that we have never faced before. We have not been this way before. We have not been or lived in 2024. Nobody has. 
So no matter how old you are or how much experience you might have, no one has ever lived in 2024 before. We have never been this way before. I grew up in the 80s as a Gen Xer, and one thing we used to say a lot was, been there, done that. It was like our way of saying, boring, what else you got? And for many people, there is difficulty in doing something different in a brand new year. We'll, we'll try, you know, we'll set out with a long list of resolutions for a while, and you probably have seen many a New Year's come and go, just like you've seen many a New Year's resolutions come and go. And you've learned over time that life is routine, right? It's, it's an existence, and it can be easy to get stuck in a rut. And the harsh reality is, as some of us get older, we become more set in our ways, and we become more of a victim of just repetition and sameness. When we were younger, it wasn't like that. I'm sure when we were younger, uh, we looked forward to many things. I'm sure there are people who are watching this right now who are looking forward to 2024. You know, there's some teenager out there that's anxious that this is the year they're gonna get their driver's license. There are some that are looking forward to completing high school and putting that behind them, or completing college and getting their degree, or you know, moving out of your parents' home, or starting a brand new job this year, or starting a family. Those are just some of the new things that we experience in a lifetime. And some of them are scary, and some of them are exciting. And there are certainly many challenges of youth, but no one can deny the thrill and excitement of what it means to just grow up and to become who we are, to enter into all those various stages of life and every year becomes a new opportunity and a new challenge. And then after the family comes, the next hurdles are advancing in my job and watching those children grow up. Life sure isn't boring. There's so much to do. There's so much to experience. But after a while, it starts to look the same. Every week looks the same. We do the same things every day. Every year looks the same. We do the same things every year. But if we're gonna have the best year ever, and even though it might seem that today is the same as yesterday, and the prospect of tomorrow is going to be the same as today, we have to start looking as each day is different. Psalm 118 says, This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Lamentations 3 says, The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Revelation 25 says, Behold, I am making all things new. God does not deal with the same old stuff. God is new and exciting every day. Everything God does is new. God does not deal in sameness. God never makes anything the same. Each flower in the field is different and it's distinct from all the others. Each leaf on the vine is different from all the others. Every snowflake that falls so gracefully to the earth is different from all the others. No two people are the same. We are all made differently. God threw away the mold when he made you and me. Likewise, every day God makes is different than the day before. Each year is different than the year before. So 2024 is gonna be different from 2023. This is a new day and a new year, and we have never been this way before. So let's make it the best year ever, right? Why can't it be? It doesn't have to be the same as last year. We don't have to do the same things we did last year. Why not search out new choices? Let's not do the same old thing in the same old way. Yeah, a life with no purpose can be boring. So let's find a new purpose for living. Joshua is taking the people out of the wilderness and into God's promises. So the people of Israel could not live the same way they had lived in the wilderness. 
They, they were in a promised land now, and there was new work to do. There were new enemies to conquer. There, they were no longer nomads, wandering from sand dune to sand dune. Now there's homes to be built. This is not business as usual. They had never been this way before. We have never been this way before. This new year gives us a new chance. And with that, a new day. The very first New Year's resolutions probably happened 4,000 years ago. The first recorded people to celebrate the New Year were the ancient Babylonians. Their New Year celebration was a 12-day festival called Akitu, which began with uh, spring, new planting, new, new uh, fields planted in March. And during the celebrations, Babylonians would make resolutions. They would make promises to their gods, but they weren't, they weren't promises to exercise more or to save money or to start a new job. The Babylonians would pledge loyalty to the king. They would promise to pay their debts. They would promise to return borrowed items back to the original owner. And they believed that if they kept their promises, the gods would treat them favorably that year. And if they broke their promises, they would be on the bad side of the gods. Researchers say that only about 9% of Americans that make resolutions keep them. In fact, research goes to show that 23% of people quit their resolution by the end of the first week, and 43% have already quit by January. But who knows? Maybe this will be your breakthrough year. Maybe this year you're going to keep at least one of those resolutions that you make this year. So what is it? What are you going to do differently? Maybe it's some habit you want to stop. Maybe it's some good habit that you want to start. What about at your church? Are you happy with status quo? Are you content with how things are going or are you longing for something new? Let me tell you something. Nothing new is going to happen unless it starts with each one of us. The deacons and the elders of our church are doing a great job. But what can we do differently in 2024? How can we better provide for the needs of our people? What about the choir? How can we improve congregational music in 2024? What choices can we make to improve with youth and with children, with widows, with Bible study, with small groups, with men. What choices, what new things can we do next year? There is something every single one of us can do. There are some new choices that you can make in 2024 and you can become more involved in the life of your church. That's the exciting thing about being a Christian. Right? There's, the finish line is not in this life. None of us have made it. None of us can say that, well, we're done. There is always room for growth in the Christian life. Second Peter 3 says, You therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, take care that you are not carried away with the error of lawless people and lose your own stability, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Listen, anyone can do nothing. <laughs> we can all phone it in. Relax, take it easy, let other people do all the heavy lifting. But the choice to grow in the Christian faith is up to us. And when 2024 is over, wouldn't it be so much better for every single one of us to be able to say that we were now a little closer to Jesus Christ than we were the year before? And true, we don't know what we will face in 2024. We don't know what things face us in 2024. We don't know what circumstances will change in 2024. And the unknown can be scary. Some of you have felt yourself growing weaker this past year. You're not as strong as you used to be. How are you going to face those new circumstances in your life? Maybe the doctor has told you that you should be taking it easy now going slower, 
You gotta adjust to this new way of life. This is new for you. You've never been this way before. Have you heard of peak 65? Peak 65 is gonna happen in the summer of 2024. What is peak 65? It's a demographic blip, but it will be a huge implication for our society and how it operates. Right now, more than 10,000 people in the US turn 65 every day. More than 10,000 turn 65 every day. And that, that number will peak right about at 12,000 in the summer of next year. Why? Well, because more baby boomers are hitting that traditional retirement age, and this demographic bubble will affect everything from healthcare to politics to the workforce to the future of Social Security and Medicare. None of us have been this way before. The people of Israel faced new circumstances. There was giants. You know, the spies said that there were giants living in the land. They're still there. There's going to be enemies that they have to face, they have to conquer. There's difficult obstacles ahead for them. But Joshua told them, keep your eye on the ark. And when the ark moved, they moved. Do we have an ark? Do we have a, a place where God lives? Of course. We have Jesus. Hebrews 12 says, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. The Bible says we keep our eyes on Jesus and we move when he moves. Even though we have not been this way before, he has. He knows the end and the beginning. He knows what lies ahead of us. He is the God of tomorrow, just as he is the God of today. The future holds no uncertainty for him because he is the God of the future, just as he is the God of the present. We have not been this way before, so we keep our eyes on Jesus. Joshua told the people in verse 5, Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Do you believe that's still possible? God still amazes us with his grace. He still surprises us, surprises us each day with his mercy. And we can face all the circumstances in life because God is with us. Every day does not have to be been there, done that. You don't have to be a victim of circumstance. Philippians 4 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Jesus will not let you fall under the circumstances of life. He will hold us. We may not have been this way before. We may not know what circumstances this new year will bring us. But we do know that we have the promise that was given to us at Christmas. Emmanuel, God with us. And I'm not going to face the new year without him. You know, the year has changed, but God has not. His mercy and goodness have not changed, and they are as certain as they have ever been. He is still just as reliable this next year as he was this past year. He is still as loving as he was in 2023. He is still as powerful as he was in 2023, and he is still as faithful as he was in 2023. He has not changed. He is from everlasting to everlasting. He is Alpha and Omega. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let's end the year with a thankful heart. And let's start the new year with peace and faith. Let us release any bitterness from last year. Release any frustrations from last year and let us move into the new year knowing that God loves us and he wants the best for us. Let's pray that the new year will be focused on growing ourselves, growing through Jesus, following Jesus, and building his church. We can bring the light of hope 
into the people of our community and the people of our world, and we can have the best year ever. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for making all things new. And as another new year begins, help us to live each day for you. May we continually have a new song in our hearts to sing to you, no matter what comes our way. We trust you because we know that your mercies are new every morning and nothing that lies ahead ever takes you by surprise. At the start of each day, help us to recognize you above all else. Enlighten the eyes of our hearts so that we might see you and notice how you are working through our lives. Give us the wisdom to make the best choices and fill us with the desire to seek after you more than anything else in this world. Let your spirit and power breathe in us, through us again, fresh and new. And as we face the challenges of this coming year, grant us strength and courage. Help us to rely on your mighty power and to find our refuge in you. May we be steadfast in our faith, knowing that you are our rock and our fortress. Thank you that you are greater than anything we may face in our day. Thank you that your presence goes with us and that your joy is never dependent on our circumstances, but it is our true and everlasting strength no matter what we are up against. We ask that your peace lead us, that would guard our hearts and minds in you. We ask for your grace to cover our lives each day. We love you, Lord, and we follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, we're so glad that you came out to worship with us today, and we hope that you are just as excited about this coming year uh, as we are. And so we are here. We are here every Sunday, and we would love to have you join us and to be a part of this church. We want to be the church where you live. We have two services on Sunday morning. We have one at 9.30. It's a traditional service. We have a choir. We're going to sing hymns. We're going to say the Lord's Prayer. We're going to have communion. It's going to feel just like the church that you grew up in. And then at 11 o'clock, we have a contemporary service. We have a worship team. We sing contemporary songs. We have a full program from children all the way through high school. We would love for you to be a part of our community. We'll see you guys next week.